Thanks everybody for joining us today for yet another Road to the 2016 Candy Awards webinar series. We appreciate you joining us today. We're gonna to be talking about the powers and perils of content marketing. Before I introduce you to Matt Sharp, the global talent brand strategist at CH2M, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Talent Board first. Talent Board is a nonprofit research organization all about the elevation and promotion of a quality candidate experience. We shine a light every year on what's working and what's not in recruiting and what companies are doing to make the journey um, a much more positive experience for candidates from pre-application all the way to onboarding. And we are actually on the throes of giving away our 2016 North America Candy Awards and those go to the top 50 companies based on solely based on the candidate ratings themselves. And we are going to be doing that next week at the Recruiting Trends and Talent Acquisition Technology Conference, which is in Austin, Texas, November 14th through the 16th. And the night of the 15th will be where we celebrate all these winners for this year just for North America. And very excited. We just announced this just a little bit over a week ago, uh, officially, the, the 50 winners. And there they are. And you can see CH2M is right there in the upper left-hand corner underneath Alexander Mann. So very thankful that they're on board to do this webinar today. And they're also a multi-year Candidate Experience Award winner, again, based on their candidate ratings of the experience of going through their hiring process. So, and lastly, I also wanna thank all of our sponsors. Without them, we could not have the Talent Board or the nonprofit organization. It's all underwritten and supported by these sponsors. So I wanted to thank them again for their generous support this year and uh, in the years to come. So with, without further ado, Matt, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Welcome and thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Kevin, and very, very pleased to be here. So as you, as you mentioned, I'm gonna be talking about the uh, power and perils of content marketing and I'm broadcasting live from, from London here today. So um, optimizing the, the customer or the candidate experience and creating compelling content is one of the most exciting and crucial opportunities we, I think we have as an organization. Uh, this chart here shows where the priorities are being placed on digital strategy, which is including content creation and marketing uh, from global business marketing teams and also their, their, their agencies, their marketing agencies and advertising agencies. So you can see that the top two there are optimizing the customer experience and creating compelling digital content. And obviously optimizing customer experience, we're relating that to the candidate experience. So with a heavy focus from global organizations, it shows that we need to be thinking ever more strategically about the content we produce in order to compete effectively in the market. And with such apparent commitment, um, there should also exist huge opportunity. Next slide, please. So, however, um, in, in 2015, Gartner's hype cycle moved content marketing into the trough of disillusionment phase. So, and that's because it's getting harder and harder to get results with content marketing. And yet in recruitment communications or employer branding space, in most companies are only really just turning up to the party. So should we be concerned? Well, it's clear that we're being bombarded with content from every angle, whether it's clickbait, Facebook posts, or long form guides on LinkedIn that offer to help us solve our most complex challenges. The vital thing to consider is that if it's the right content for you at the right time, it can have a huge impact on us and can plant the seed for, of a long relationship with a company, uh, resulting in increased engagement and long-term improvements in quality of hire. Um, it's also important to remember that this graph represents the marketing space as a whole. And while there is a peril in the fact that we are being bombarded with content from all angles, there is still a staggering opportunity for us to use this method to improve the candidate experience at the very first touch point and engage people with our business in a unique and exciting way. So how do we go about it? Next slide, please. <laughs> the first step is to think about the overall approach or, or strategy for content marketing. And it won't be a surprise to any of you on the call, I'm sure, but here is a rough guide as to how we go about it at CH2M. Firstly, uh, define the audience, but also critically understand how they feel before and after key interactions with you. 
think about your interviews, assessment centers, outcome conversations, or, or simply researching you on, online. Put yourself in a candidate's shoes, walk through your own recruitment process to see how it feels. Identify the big easy items to fix and focus your team on fixing them quickly. But basically understand who your audience is and what they want and need from you at every part of the candidate experience. Two, uh, based, oh no, no, sorry, <laughs> a bit more on that one. Um, we're gonna go through these each by, uh, one by one, but um, basically on the, uh, based on the wholly specific audience you want to attract, you need to build and plan relevant content that will give your candidates what they want and need whether they're successful in the process or not, um, and you need to strip away any content that's unhelpful or unnecessary. You need to target and distribute, get the content to them. If you understand your audience, then you'll know more about where and when to target, where they live online, and what will get them to act on the content. Uh, measure results. Obviously, the great thing about digital content is our ability to track so well. So whether it's clicks, likes, or shares, or actual leads generated, applications received, or sign-ups to your uh, talent pools, Capture it all and you're building a case for increased future efforts. And diagnose as well. It may not work every time. Uh, you, know, you need to learn from it and try again and try again. Um, you need to ask yourself the questions. You know, why, why did it work? Why didn't it work? What could we do differently? How could we optimize that piece of content? If you have a piece of content you believe in, you know, share it with someone in the business. Ask them if it resonates with them. If it doesn't, ask them why not and uh, what else would they like to see? You know, what would make that person like and act on it? Look at the audience and then redefine them if you need to. And it's a, a, you know, a process which goes um, you know, round and round, really. Finally, we can't do it all alone. You'll need to get the help internally and externally. So marketing, brand analytics, uh, leadership, your third party providers, they've all got a part to play to help you uh, to improve in each of these, uh, each of these stages. Um, so how do we do that though? Getting everyone on board within an organization is, is daunting. Uh, and for many of us to move to this approach means massive change management. It's, it's not easy. Sales, marketing, comms and HR all have separate agendas and it will be hard work to get everyone thinking the same way and believing in the approach. It's a case of really of proving the concept time and time again, proving the results. Um, we've come a long way with this at CH2M in the past couple of years, but I can tell you that you know, we're not still fully aligned. Teams and business strategy can change very quickly. So it sometimes feels like we're having to go back to square one and start again to convince the business. But carry on building a case and you will get there. Uh, make sure you have the analytics in place to monitor how it's all performing. Once you can demonstrate success, it becomes easier to get people on board and moving in the same direction and offering the support that you need. And we're going to take a look at defining the audience. So for help with this, we actually looked at the corporate executive board and they provide a simple table you can use to start thinking about your priorities. Um, many of you will have a good idea of what those are as you are speaking to your stakeholders every day. But this is a useful exercise to complete either way. And it helps start a conversation again about content and how you can better engage those priority segments through it. Um, it's really only used as a guide, but again, it's useful for the business case. Ask yourself and your teams, your stakeholders, how difficult roles are to recruit to um, and how important roles are to the business and to place them into this, this table. Um, it can give you a great guide for figuring out which audiences to focus on first. Um, but again, it can also be the basis of conversation with stakeholders to get them thinking about relevant content too. So we are going through this process now. Um, in fact, it, it's really a, a kind of constant. Uh, when we launched a new corporate brand at CH2M, uh, we developed a number of different personas, and those have been really useful for, uh, to date. They worked well for our initial launch, but to be successful, we know we need to, to think deeper about the new talent that we are working hard to attract and find ways to engage those audiences specifically. Uh, the people we need are hard to find, and in the highly competitive global market, they're difficult to influence too. Uh, in order to be effective, we need to segment our talent audience to a much deeper level. For example, and as the people on this call be more than aware, our future talent or graduate audience can be the lifeblood of our future success. As millennials, they interact with media in a unique way, and they have a unique set of drivers to some of our more experienced talent. 
So to be successful, we need to understand this and adapt our strategies accordingly. We need to be flexible in our messaging and able to tailor to the unique audience we want to attract and engage. And therein lies the, the power of the great content. We, we need to understand what makes them tick. And in order to get this understanding, we actually went through a process of uh, empathy mapping, which I'm going to talk to you about now. Next slide. So for this, this is a future talent example. And for this, we work through each and every step of our process and put together this map <clears throat> to understand how our future talent will be feeling at any particular stage and also what is going to be important, important to them at that stage. So what kind of information will they be after? You know, what will they want to know about us or our process? And how can we give them the type of information they need when they need it? So this example shows the future talent audience, uh, and we actually look back to school and university, right through to job research and application, and then track empathy throughout the process to try and understand where our content could have the most impact, and also to help us decide what we could put into our content, what we could write about or, or you know, blog about or, or film. So having spoken to our grads, we realized that there is often fear about what will happen when you start a job your natural anxiety really about what to expect when you when you, you know, walk through the door. Uh, so we compiled a list of these fears and asked our future talent what the reality was when joining. And we uncovered some really great stories um, which we've produced into a content which we can now send to new starters when they're preparing to join us. Um, but the great thing about that is that we've published this on our, on our site too. So it's a piece of content that can help influence even in the research stage before someone applies. And it really helps show that we understand our audience you know we, we it helps put them at ease um, it really shows that we are open inclusive and, and welcoming um, so going through this process I think we found it hugely rewarding but it's it's worth noting that we've only focused on future talent right now you know, the peril in this is the time and resource to ensure you do this properly and um, commit to it for all of your critical segments I'd, I'd say that we are on the way but it's you know certainly a journey Uh, so once you've decided on the audience to focus on, uh, or audiences to focus on, now you have to build the content. And some things to consider here, uh, which I've, most of them I've mentioned already, but make sure the audience is, make sure the content is audience focused, from research to job advert to application. Your success here will really come from the empathy mapping. You've got to vary the style and intent of the of the content you're producing as well. So the power will come from a mix of emotionally resonant content to draw people in and inspire them about your company, as well as the content that hits a spot from a more rational decision-making perspective. So think of a day in the life video versus a guide to the recruitment process at your company. Uh, producing the same, the same type of content over and over is not really going to have the desired effect. Um, focus groups as well for content planning and story generation, you know, uncover stories relevant to your brand and audience and business needs as well. For example, with us, future talent, diversity, or if you're going into a new region or country, um, use your existing employees and ask them what kind of information would have been useful to them. And you know, perhaps produce internal comms campaigns to, to uncover gems and, and bring people forward to tell the story. But you also, to do this, you, you, the resource is, is a challenge. You need agile resources to actually capture those stories. Um, you need to prepare the team so you've got the right tools and resources in place to get the videos, podcasts, infographics, case studies, you know, people profiles, reports, whatever it might be uh, that you can then use to, to, to sort of push out to, uh, to candidates. And then sign off, you know, great content responds to what is happening in the market as well. So ensure that you've got comms and legal you know, on your side, on board with you, ready to turn around uh, the content quickly. So how do you then use that content or target and distribute it? Well, I'd say true content marketing, it, you know, it signifies a, a big, pretty major shift from actually pushing messages out to your audience via you know, press releases and adverts, et cetera, uh, to actually pulling candidates in to engage with your brand in a way that is, you know, more engaging, but, like, but also always on. It's always going to exist on your site. So get it right and you can 
the time, you know, all times when it isn't even, um, you know, perhaps you may not, may not even have any jobs live, relevant jobs live, but they're still coming to your site and engaging with you. So this shift really puts the emphasis of your time and budget towards the 70% that makes up your digital, digital storytelling and electronic marketing. That's the authentic content around who you are as a company, who works for you and why. Um, it's low risk, but can be time consuming to get a good foundation in place. It includes video and you know, basic content creation and search marketing. The next 20% or the middle, the middle layer there uh, is spent on developing the new content for the year or season ahead. So if, for example, with the future talent example, you know when your uh, graduate season is starting up. So you've got to think ahead and, and prepare for that and start creating the content, new content each year to build upon what you already have. It really enhances what, what is there already. Um, the last 10% should be really the high risk, sort of high reward ideas. So where you've got content and you want to try and get that uh, to your market in a new way. Um, you know, perhaps you're trying something with WhatsApp, um, Snapchat, something like that. Um, yeah, those can be, they're, they're a bit more high risk, but they can really pay off well uh, if, if it's sort of well managed. So what have we been doing so far at CHTREM? Well, we've, we've begun by creating and curating content that, that speaks to our, our critical segments. Um, by gathering content that shows that we care about their needs and empathize with their situation, we, we build our brand and our reputation as an employer of choice. So the content you see on the screen talks about what our graduates have to say about joining the workforce. So we've got a specific internship experience, careers tips, um, a diversity event, working on building a bridge in Rwanda and an award specific to a, a new region. So all of that content helps us build and nurture talent and can be used in, a multiple, uh, in multiple ways across our owned and, and paid media. And we also have um, obviously targeted videos and things like that, which we use in the same way. So we've also found particular success with uh, sponsoring content. Uh, as well as obviously having it exist on our site, you know, it's true to say that we do have, you know, we don't, sorry, always have a stronger brand as some, as our comp some of our competitors. Um, you know, often we need to work harder to get in front of them and sponsoring content is a great way to do that. You know, our future talent audience is a good example of this really, but um, by adding funding to these posts to target specific groups, we can really influence and gain ground with, with, with new markets. Um, so this post is a good example of that. And um, yeah, just as a single example, this post created over 32,000 impressions, 209 clicks to our sites, uh, 15 likes, shares and comments, and, and 20 additional LinkedIn followers. So that's just one example. Um, they might, you know, numbers might not sound huge, but that's a, you know, this is a piece of content that exists on our site and will continue to generate traffic in an evergreen nature. Um, so long term, we'll have a great influence and we can use this, this post, you know, this, this piece of content in a multitude of ways. So it will carry on delivering value, um, you know, as long as we have it live and as long as it feels relevant. In addition to nurturing via specific content like that, we've also been nurturing with a slightly more general uh, talent connection newsletter, which is sent out every month to candidates who join the ch talent community. So this is a bit more of a broad brush uh, approach, um, but this, this communication includes not just jobs, but um, industry news, ch culture, uh, developments, job seeker tips, employee spotlights, um, as well as featured jobs. So this new newsletter actually receives better click through and open rates than the email sort of industry standard. Um, we've got a subscriber base of nearly 115,000 and um, we receive on average 410 uh, new applicants every month just through, through this piece of communication. And they're candidates that we've engaged over time and are now ready to apply to the organization. We're also working hard to engage our own employees as well um, and create brand advocates. Uh, we wanted to help us share content, activating our brand with their own social networks and displaying thought leadership at the same time. So we use LinkedIn Elevate for this. Uh, it allows our employees to create content from the web based on predefined categories and share it out to their network. 
Um, so you can see this is just an example from one week. Um, but in this week, our employees helped generate 382 shares, reached almost a million people and impacted uh, you know, 1.3 thousand uh, engagements. Um, which again, and this is a mixture of third party sort of news and thought leadership and also our own uh, you know, news about CH2M and articles that we've written and people profiles and so on. So really, just to summarize, uh, I, I called this the power and the perils, and I've tried to sort of bring some of those to, to the fore while, while going through the examples. But uh, just to summarize, the power I think we can, we can get out of uh, creating great content and using it in the right way. We can improve reach due to passive as well as active candidates. We can get greater engagement with our brand. We can improve, uh, we can have an improvement in the quality of the applicants as we sort of influence them uh, in a better way. Um, and also a reduction in the quantity of irrelevant candidates as we sort of drive to you know, help people self-select. It's helping us to drive towards being a global employer of choice. It's creating great awareness of our business and our opportunities. It's creating brand advocates within uh, CH2M. And it also gives us the tools to dispel myths about our organization. Um, and I believe it improves greatly our, our ability to attract diverse audience. But some of the perils with this, um, yeah, convincing the business, you know, building the case for content is, as I said at the beginning, not easy. Um, you know, some people believe in it, some people won't. Um, but you know, that's, that's one of the challenges that we have to overcome. Uh, generating the content itself, you know, resource and business buy-in, getting people to contribute for you is, is not easy as well. Um, achieving sign-off can be a challenge, uh, you know, especially with, with legal and comms. You know, does it really uh, fit into the wider strategy that they, that they have? Um, you know, how can we sort of make sure that we're, we're sort of on the path together with that? And maintain, maintaining momentum. You know, how much can you produce? How regularly can you produce it? Getting the frequency right, uh, it, you know, for your team is, is a challenge. Um, responding to business needs. So again, you know, business needs can change very drastically, very quickly. Um, you know, have you then got the content in place to, to support that or do you need to, to, to create that uh, quickly? Um, positioning, I've, I've written there, making sure you, that you've got the right balance of sort of brand play, lead generation uh, in the right way. So just, again, it's just getting a balance of what you're putting out there, you know, emotionally resonant versus uh, more rational, for example. And response, you know, low click-throughs, low engagement that you know, we often get from, um, from some of the content that is produced. So, you know, it's monitoring that and, and finding ways to optimize it and make it work harder for you. Um, yeah, all of it is, is, is an ongoing sort of improvement process and you know, I sort of refer back to that circle at the beginning. You know, we have to keep redefining, keep optimizing, keep focusing on, on what's important and how we can improve the, the, t the type of content that we're producing. So that's the end of the presentation. Thanks very much for your time, everyone, and I hope you, um, hope you enjoyed it. Matt, thank you so much. That was excellent. For those of you who have any questions for Matt, please feel free to reach out him directly with his contact information that's right there on the slide. If you have any questions about Talent Board and the Candidate Experience Awards research that we do, uh, feel free to reach out to me as well. Matt, just a couple of takeaways before I let you go. Um, first, of, first of all, spoken like consummate marketers, number one. That, that was down the line fabulous what you outlined. Because on the marketing side, you know, that has the, the, the granularity of which you went into has been going on a long time to sell stuff from companies. And whereas, but you're to, to apply it to a, market, a recruiting perspective, that's really excellent. So kudos to you and your team <laughs> Thank for, you. for, for doing all that. And I think a couple of things that's important for everybody to, to again, for me to take away and to pass on to everybody that was listening as well. The fact that you've walked through, you've walked your own walk in the recruiting process, you know what, what candidates go through from pre-application um, all the way through screening and offer and onboarding for that matter, right? And, you've, you've, and the empathy mapping, that's, that's amazing that you've done that. You've actually been able to, to invest the time and resources to, to do that mm -hmm. and to sustain that over time is, is difficult enough for even true corporate marketing teams. So kudos that again, 
<laughs> that you've been able to do that. And, and again, the, just the investment and the reinvestment that you continue to make to do this because it is a moving target. The business, yep. businesses do change and need to evolve and the needs, the recruiting needs change and ebb and flow. So um, again, excellent. Thank you so much for sharing. And, and I look forward to uh, seeing you very soon. Thanks, Matt. Excellent. Thanks again. Thanks everybody for coming. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.